Hey everyone, it's Charlie with FPP Shorts here. It's been a while since my last video, got through the holiday season, I hope you did as well and that your display ran great. Today I wanna go over adding audio to the videos that you take of your display. A lot of times when you're outside, there's wind noise, the audio is just really muffled, it's just not that great. And if you wanna upload it to YouTube, Facebook, send it to your friends, whatnot, adding audio in in post-production can really increase the quality of your video and remove any of those wind noises, dog barking in the background, that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into this. To do this, we're gonna use a video editing software called DaVinci Resolve. There's a few other good video editing softwares out there. There's Premiere from the Adobe package, there's Final Cut. I am no video editing expert by any means, but this has worked for me. So the first thing that we wanna do is we just wanna Google DaVinci Resolve. There's an ad here and we're gonna click on the first organic result. And it brings us to DaVinci Resolve at blackmagicdesign.com. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see where the downloads are. There's a download here for Windows, but just select the operating system that you're running on and download that and get it installed. There is a paid version, it's $295 in late December 2022. Prices are subject to change, obviously. But since I already have it downloaded, I am going to open it up now. After you get Resolve downloaded and installed, once you open it, the first thing you should be greeted, greeted with is the project manager. Just kind of a folder of all of the projects that you've been working on. If this is brand new, you're just probably blank and you just have an untitled project, so we're gonna start there. Double click on Untitled Project and it brings us right into the cut page. Most of what we're gonna wanna do is inside of the editing page. We're gonna touch on color as well for a very, very short time. We have our media pool here, we have our timeline, we have our previews. In this media pool, we can drag and drop in files. If you wanna actually search around in your drives, you can go to the media folder you can see your different drives here and go around looking for different files or videos. But I'm gonna hop back into the edit tab here and I am going to bring in, I have an audio source. That's the audio that I wanna use for the song or the sequence that I took video of. And then here is my video. And so I just dragged these in from File Explorer, nothing special there. And we have our video here. So we're gonna bring this video in here see how it also brought in the audio as well we want that because ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to try to sync these two audio tracks together and we're going to try to match the waveform of the video's audio to the actual audio file that we're bringing in here and to do that we're just going to zoom in a little bit here and we're going to be looking for kind of markers if you will or kind of telltales of where the audio should be so we're going to go through this waveform and this right here is looking kind of notable. So if we play it here, we should hear the drum roll kick in a second time. Oh, maybe not. So let's try by moving this over. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Scrubbing through the timeline, here's another marker, another spot that looks like it could sync up. And this is looking pretty good, so if we listen to it, we can hear a slight echo coming from it, but it's not bad. So I'm actually going to call this acceptable and good. And what I want to do here is I actually want to mute the track that came in with the video. Because I don't want that playing, I just want the good audio file playing. So now that we have that done, we can essentially cut this up. And to cut it to be at the beginning and end of the song, there's two ways to do it. Is you could either do an in and an out marker, and then just render between the in and outs. Or you can actually cut it down to be just the length of the audio track here. So I'll show you how to do both. And if we want to do the in and out method, we'll start there. I'm going to come to the beginning of the audio track and the timeline, and I'm going to press I on my keyboard. If you notice, that puts a great line here. I'm going to come to the end of the song, 
and press O on my keyboard. And now that just has that area selected. If we went to deliver to render it out, we would render the in out range here and not entire timeline. But let's hop back to the editor page. And let's actually cut this down so we don't have to worry about doing in out ranges. And we're gonna wanna use the blade or B on your keyboard would be a hot key for it. We're actually gonna cut it right there on this video on track, on video one, audio one track. Press A for the select tool on my keyboard. I'm gonna click this extra amount of video here. Press delete. I'm gonna slide over to the beginning. I'm gonna do the same thing, kinda come to right about here. Pressing the B key for the blade tool. I'm gonna click on that and that'll make a cut in there. Press A for the selector and then delete. And if you notice, that shoved everything up to the beginning, but now my in out range isn't right. So I am just going to fix that by doing that. And boom, we are ready to render this out. So since we're in here, there's a couple of things we can do. And one of them would be if our camera was slightly tilted, not perfectly level for what we want, we can fix that here. And by clicking on the video track itself, if you come up to the right hand corner under transform, you have zoom, you can change positions. What we want to look at is the rotation angle here. So we want to find a spot where there's some lights on. So we're going to scrub around until we see some lights. And let's go a little farther here. Okay, right there. And this is looking pretty good. It's tilted a little bit to the right being low. So I'm going to hop up to this rotation angle. And this is, can be very, very sensitive. So just go slow. And really all we're looking for is the right way to go. If we want to go negative or positive. We want to go positive. 0.27 or 275 is looking good. I'm going to actually just go to 175. And that's looking great. Now the next thing we can do is, I got this red light off to the left side, that's my neighbor's house. I wanna cut that out of here, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And I don't necessarily wanna cut out all my trees. So once after I zoom, I can come down to position and play with my X axes, kinda of get that centered up in there. Come to my Y position, bring it down, just kinda of center everything up here and that is looking really good okay i'm gonna be happy with that so the next thing we can do is we could render this out now or we could come into the color tab if there's any color correction you want to do uh boost your colors make it take some of the highlights away or darken some of the shadows that can be done in the color tab here so once again we're going to find a spot where we get some color on the house scrub 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 there we go and if we scroll in it's looking pretty good actually. We can do color boost down here and you can see how it kind of boosts the color. This can cause some uh, color flares if you will. The next thing we can do is play with our shadows and see how we can brighten it up by bringing the shadows up or bring it, darken it by bringing the shadows down. I actually really like where this was at zero. And then highlights. Highlights will help reduce some of the blowout some of your more high dense props give if you look at the spinners on my garage you can kind of see as i go up they just kind of blow out solid white and as i come down you can kind of make out the individual spokes a little more so i'm going to go about negative 20 here i find is usually about a sweet spot for me and with that that is about all that i do to deliver a video so next thing i'm gonna do is go under deliver and give it a file name. Let's call this Griswold Intro, and then a location to save it. So now here's one of the things that you wanna watch out for, is your project frame rate and resolution. If you notice by default, this came to 24 frames per second. Ultimately, you want this to be whatever you recorded in. And in most cases for house lights, 30 FPS is just fine and 1080 uh, you can do 4k if you want but just know it's the resource requirement for editing and rendering 
is that much more. So if we come under File and then Project Settings, this is where we can change the timeline resolution and we can change our frame rate here as well. If you want to change it to 30, you can. I accidentally recorded this at 24 frames per second. So that's kind of what I'm stuck with on this one. That's one of the things as you record, you make mistakes, jot those mistakes down, don't make them next time. So to render this out, everything's looking good here. We have a name, we have a save location, and we're gonna click add to render queue at the bottom. It's gonna come up here on the right, and then we just click render all. And this will go through and render it depending on your video size, how many edits you have, any effects you bring in. This can take anywhere from a couple of seconds to a few minutes. For this one, it's super short. It's just about done and it is done. So now we can come and find that if we wanna watch it quick. So here it is playing. So now we have this plane. Let's just double check it. 100 individual bulbs per strand for a grand total of 25,000 imported Italian twinkle lights. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh. So faces look like they line up just fine. Looks good. Doesn't look like it's completely off or anything. So I'm going to call this good. Close that down. And that's ready to share with people. Just like that, inside of a few minutes. We added the audio to our video in post-production. We got rid of any wind noise, dog barking noises, car noises, anything like that. And we are ready to share it. We have an MP4 file. Let's go upload it to YouTube at this point. Make a million bucks, right? If you learned something today, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to FPP Shorts. If there's anything you want me to cover, let me know down in the comments. And we will see you around real soon.